Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. The big guns are here, the mother of all GPUs has finally arrived. It's time to check out one of the most interesting GPUs that we've ever used, the RTX 3090. In this video we're checking out Gigabyte's RTX 3090 Gaming OC. Don't be fooled though, it might have gaming in the name and you can use it to game, but this is so much more than a gaming GPU. Right off the bat, I'm gonna come out and say it, the RTX 3090, although it can play games, is not exclusively designed to be a gaming GPU. It's designed to be a Titan class GPU for content creation, memory heavy GPU workloads, and 8K gaming. It's a, basically just a workstation GPU for the masses. Titan GPUs have traditionally been made only by Nvidia in limited quantities, but as the industry shifts, Nvidia needs to shift who they target their cards towards. And yeah, they have to make them more affordable and more accessible to the consumers that want it. Nvidia also came out and said that the uplift over the 3080 for 4K gaming for these 3090s is only about 10 to 15%. And they came out and said that this morning as I was writing this script, which is what you should expect anyways. And like usual, limit your expectations. You're gonna see all of that action in this video anyway, so stay tuned. Now, I'm gonna level with you guys as well. This GPU arrived pretty late on, and I'm talking like less than 24 hours away from this embargo lift, and we did as much as we possibly could do with it in that limited amount of time. Nvidia also sent out a Founders Edition 3090 as well, but because of all the madness going on in the world, it's being held up in shipping delays, and that's why there's no founders numbers in this video, unfortunately. Now we have a very interesting video with the FE card planned, so yeah, make sure you're subscribed if you're not subscribed yet. The Gigabyte RTX 3090 Gaming OC is built on the new NVIDIA Ampere architecture and features 24 gigs of memory. In terms of power delivery and consumption, it requires two 8-pin PCIe power connectors and will consume on average around 365 watts at full tilt. It also features SLI through NVLink, but they've changed the edge connector so it will require a new SLI bridge if you're gonna go down that path. And from what I can see, there's no bridges available yet. As far as testing the cards, we did a video talking about our new test bench a few weeks ago, and you can check that out in the top right hand corner right now. And we changed a few things since that video, and we ran all of these benchmarks on an Intel and AMD test bench. The results you're seeing in this video is from the Intel test bench, and all of the AMD results are actually being recorded for a future video. And there's gonna be more on that a little bit later in another video, not this video. Anyway, we don't include 1% highs or lows with these tests because it just introduces a whole lot of unnecessary testing, especially because these are canned benchmarks. And I personally feel that an average frame rate gives you a good indication of the expected performance on a system that is configured like our testing hardware. And if you're buying a 3090, you're gonna wanna have hardware that is similar to what we're using for testing. So we're using a 10700K on our Intel bench, which is an eight-core CPU, and the 3900 XT on our AMD bench. And this also leads us into the first thing I wanted to address. At this time with the testing we've done, we found that there was no difference between PCIe 3.0 and PCIe 4.0. Any differences were within a margin of error and completely negligible. We also tested on our AMD test bench by switching the mode in the BIOS from three to four, and we also obviously used the Intel bench for PCIe Gen 3 testing alone. We also included some 8K testing to show how absolutely revolutionary these new 3090 cards are. So with that said, let's get into it. Let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. As we've mentioned in our 3080 content, at lower resolutions, 1080p is completely CPU bound. And there's no surprises here. Uh, this shouldn't surprise you given that the GPUs at 1080p have been CPU bound for a long time. The 3090 is basically not designed for 1080p or even 1440p. It's really geared towards 4K and above. And I can't believe those words are actually leaving my mouth, 4K and above. It's uh, crazy what, what the world that we're living in right now. And much like the 3080, the 3090 really shines at 4K. It's pretty impressive. Now, nine frames over the 3080 is no joke, especially at 4K it's a significant enough uplift. It's not amazing, but it is more and it is noticeable. 
We ran a quick benchmark at 8K as well to show you the kind of raw performance without DLSS as well. And 32 frames per second at a resolution four times greater than 4K is pretty impressive for a game like Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, 32 frames is playable. It's not going to be the best experience, but it's better than running out of VRAM. I can tell you that much. Okay, let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed four tests in total. We used a 4K optimized preset, the 1080p extreme preset, a custom 1440p preset, and the 8K optimized preset on the 3090. Just out of a little bit of curiosity. Now Superposition is a pretty good benchmark if you want to get an idea of performance on your own systems because it's free. You can just go ahead and download it, install it on your system, and this gives you the opportunity to compare your results to our results. So any results that we do here on the channel. We've been using Superposition basically since the start of the channel. Okay, first up is the 1080p Extreme benchmark, and you'll notice that this benchmark, even though it's 1080p, is highly GPU bound and the 3090 delivers the best result that I've ever seen with any GPU at 1080p extreme. And be aware though, again, like this benchmark is at 1080p, yes, it's it, it, we, we get it, but it is designed to destroy your GPU and it is not limited by the CPU whatsoever. At 1440p, it's much more of the same here. A six FPS uplift is well outside a margin of error and it's nothing to scoff at. It's really interesting to see this, but 4K is where the real magic starts to happen. And at 4K, again, is where the 3090 decides it wants to pull away from the rest of the field significantly. 12 FPS at 4K is a very impressive uplift. Despite what Nvidia said about 10 to 15%, I think that's actually pretty impressive. And lastly, just out of curiosity, we ran the 8K optimized preset with both the 3090 and the 3080, and 55 frames per sec is very playable. I mean, it would be playable if it was a game, but it's a benchmark and yeah. Although I just wanted to add as well, the frame times did fluctuate between around 16 and 18 milliseconds. Yeah, that's just a little bit of food for thought. Okay, next up is Basemark GPU. Now, Basemark is a great indication of Vulkan performance as the 3D engine is really designed for Vulkan and it really, really takes advantage of your 3D hardware. A lot of people overlook it. You should never overlook Vulkan. And as you're about to see with Vulkan, it's, it's, it's pretty impressive with the uplift of this card because at 1080p with the Vulcan benchmark and base mark, the 3090 absolutely pummels the rest of the cards. Even at lower resolutions, Vulcan is always more telling of how a card has been designed and optimized and the architecture. At 1440p, the differences are about the same as 1080p. And given what we know about Vulcan again and how the API interacts with the hardware, it scales very, very well with this benchmark. This is then again echoed at 4K with the differences really surprising me. Now, I had to run these tests multiple times over and over really to make sure that what I was seeing was correct because the Vulcan performance is nothing short of impressive. But let's circle back to Shadow of the Tomb Raider with some DLSS and Ray Trace Shadow benchmarks. Although Shadow of the Tomb Raider only supports DLSS 1.0, we did include Death Stranding because of its DLSS 2.0 support. We ran three different combinations of tests with DLSS enabled, Ray Trace Shadows enabled, and both enabled at 1440p, 4K, and 8K. At 1440p, the results are pretty much as you'd expect. It's really echoing what we saw with the earlier tests with all three of these tests. Moving on to 4K, we're seeing the 3090 pull ahead of the 3080 and the rest of the field. Lastly, we did 8K for science, and this is just a straight up comparison between the 3090 and 3080 because of the time constraints we had. If Shadow of the Tomb Raider had DLSS 2.0, I'm fairly certain the results would be far more impressive. But then again, we only did this for science. We just had to know. 
All right, let's move on to Death Stranding. We decided to do a straight up 3090 versus 3080 DLSS 2.0 comparison with both DLSS modes enabled, that's being performance and quality. And we did this at 1440p, 4K, and again, 8K at max settings. This game runs so well with DLSS 2.0 and 8K, especially in performance mode with both the 3080 and 3090. Above a 60 FPS average is amazing. Honestly, that is some properly game changing stuff. Who would have thought that 8K gaming, a resolution that is four times higher than 4K would be accessible in 2020? Who would have thunk it? Not me. Now onto the most requested benchmarks, some professional workloads. Now this is the type of benchmark many will overlook. We're actually gonna really dive into this with the Founders Edition review, but for this, we're just gonna run a few quick tests just so you can get an idea of how this performs. We decided to run two Blender scenes, both the Classroom and the BMW scenes, and the Premiere Pro render benchmark that we built a little while ago. First up, the Blender BMW scene. Remember that with the rest of these benchmarks, the lower the number, the better. The 3090 is faster than the 3080 by a considerable amount. The difference with these render and compute workloads are insane. In the classroom scene, we're seeing more of the same, which is really great for 3D modelers and content creators. Never fear though, guys, we've got a whole video focused on these memory intensive workloads coming really, really soon. We're gonna be using the 3090 Founders Edition for those, so yeah, uh, stick around because there's gonna be a lot of people who buy 3090s for workstation use. Okay. Finally, Premiere Pro and Adobe Media Encoder. Now this is an indication of the expected performance and this one is always gonna be dependent on the CPU, but this just gives you a good indication of what these GPUs will do with Premiere Pro. And the render times again are not that different and it's within a margin of error for CUDA. Now really guys, there wasn't enough time to do any acoustic testing, but from our observations, the RTX 3090 Gaming OC is a very silent card, even with our Fermark one hour stress test, and there was zero coil whine. In fact, the card's quieter than the 3080 Gaming OC. Anyway, speaking of Fermark, let's take a look at some thermals. Now, we couldn't get the 3090 Gaming OC above 63 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office, I think the result is fairly impressive considering how much memory this card has and the potential for this thing to heat up. But also be aware though, we're running all of these tests on an open air test bench and the results in a closed system will definitely be different. But as far as what the Gigabyte card offers over the Founders card, you're getting RGB if you're into that kind of thing. The RGB accent is basically just on the Gigabyte logo. You're getting a pretty silent card with zero color wine, which is already better than the 3080 Gaming OC. You're getting a card with a dual BIOS switch, which can be switched between OC or silent mode. You're getting a card that doesn't require a new power connector like the Founders Edition cards. However, you're getting a card that can suck up to 365 watts of power. And I did see it spike up to around 370, but it's too inconsistent to say that it pulls 370 watts. Performance wise, the 3090 is really impressive. The AK DLSS testing in Death Stranding is what really, really stood out to me. And it's crazy how far we've come since the 20 series. And if you thought the 3080 was impressive, the 3090 doubles down and makes that generational leap even bigger. But again, please keep this in mind, the 3090 is really designed for memory intensive workloads and less about gaming. I think that's the real story here. People obviously are gonna throw their money away at a 3090 for gaming because they can, but ultimately they're designed for things like Blender, for Octane Renderer, they're also designed for 8K raw video editing, and these are the things that we're actually gonna cover in our Founders Edition review when that card arrives, so make sure you subscribe with the bell turned on and all that stuff to see that video when it drops. At the end of the day, Again, all we're doing is giving you numbers that we found and it's up to you to make a decision if it's something that you're interested in and if it's gonna be worth your hard earned money. I said that wrong last time. <laughs> I said hard on money last time. <laughs> Anyways guys, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna predict like the 3080 launch. The 3090 launch is gonna have really limited supply filled with people botting and scalping to get their hands on these cards and I'm gonna 
say it like I've been saying in these last few videos, you should probably limit your expectations when it comes to availability if you're wanting to grab one of these cars, which is why I'm not gonna talk about pricing because I don't even know it anyway. I'll, I'll put it in the description if I end up finding out, but no one's saying anything to be honest. Anyways, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you hated the video, you know what to do and hit that dislike button twice. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. If you wanna get early access to videos, not like this one, because this is like a launch embargo video. Float plan, we're on float plan. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And funny story guys, just before we hit record on this, right? Like literally minutes before we hit record on this video, look what arrived at our doorstep. All right. <laughs> so we didn't even get a chance to test. Like all these cards have been delayed so much with shipping and everything and availability. This one rocked up literal hours before the embargo lifted. What is it? 3090 ROG Strix Gaming. Yeah, this video will be coming next week. Don't worry, we got you. We're not, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching.